Yeah, I was just going to uh, start off with talking a little bit about um, uh, critical rate range. Um, all right, so critical rate range, I guess, is you get all the Australian, all the different species of mammals across Australia and put them in a line from smallest to biggest. And then I think the cats, they zero in on around about the western bud, bandicoot, things that size, and just <laughs> create a, basically a destruction around there, and then things on either side of that. And if we go back to sort of why how I sort of see it from the, the cat's point of view, um, I've looked at a bunch of cat, you know, like um, pet cat websites and things like that, and recommendation for a happy, healthy cat, around about 200 grams of food to stay you know, healthy and potentially have a lot of young. So from a cat's point of view, a kangaroo's pretty much out of the question because it'll whoop it and knock it out. They could go for a bilby-sized prey, uh, so these are, would probably, you know, they're about a one or two kilograms. They will give them probably about 400 grams of, you know, good food, but they often fight back. And especially if it's a quoll, they could, you know, really do some damage. So probably ideal, not the best. Then you get the mid-sized critical rate prey, range prey. So they're the things like the uh, Western Bar Bandicoot, but also stickness rats, around about 200, 300 grams. Perfect amount of food for a nice day. You only need to kill one of them to get all the food you need, and they almost can't fight back in any shape or form. So, they're, yeah, cat's point of view, I'd absolutely ideal. Then you can get, like, uh, you know, for the same amount of food, uh, you know, like 200 grams for hopping mice or things like that. And, yeah, that's probably ideal. We have to catch a bunch of them. Then if you want to, you know, if a cat wants to only eat hop house mice and things of that size, they probably need to kill about 20 of them. And then if you're geckos and skinks and things like probably have 40 or 50. But I wanted to really home in on this, and this is probably one of the main reasons the critical rate range is from a cat's point of view, perfect food. And uh, the other reason that I think a lot of native animals are perfect food is that their burrows are just so easy to find. So this is an example of a plains mouse burrow. You can see all the, you can barely even see the hole, but all the points lead to that. And I think the things like that just make a lot of native wildlife absolutely perfect for cats. So uh, a while ago, I had a bit of research um, at Arab Recovery, which is, um, yeah, in the uh, pretty much centre of Australia. It's on, uh, yeah, Kukusa country and, um, yeah, around also uh, Arabana and um, Kiani in the, in the area. And I had a research project on looking at why, well, whether cat, sorry, whether rabbit control would also remove cats. And so I did it in what's called the dingo pen. There were no dingoes at the time, which is the far, far north one, far north paddock of the reserve. So the idea was I'd go in there, collar a bunch of cats, we'd have a rabbit tree to go through and you know, kill as many rabbits as possible, then I'd see how, the, uh, see how the cats responded to that. And first of all, when put a bunch of remote cameras out to see what was happening, and instantly remote cameras pointed out that the southern boundary of that fence was where I was catching you know, all the rabbit, all the cat detections were. There was something about that southern fence in this particular paddock that was uh, getting way more detections than anywhere else. Collared a bunch of cats, put some GPS units on it, and here's an example of one of the cats. You can see it had its little core home range around at the side there. You can see it does a few forays to the northern fences, checks them out, doesn't think much of them, but then repeatedly does these big journeys to that southern fence, checking them out, working out what's going on there. And uh, it was really good for me in some regards because it means when I try to catch these cats, about seven or eight cage traps around the southern boundary, I was able to catch yeah, a lot of cats that way. But they were something about that southern fence. They just loved. And then I, yeah, when I got the GPS data, I put the uh, habitat selection. Once again, the most favorite thing for cats in that area was that southern fence. Um, all the other fence lines, Almost negative selection, don't care about them, but that's southern one. And that also, because the idea was look at cat survival before and after rabbit control, it actually ended up being one of the most important factors for what cabot rabbit survival. All the cats that knew about the southern fence and would hunt along there, when I did the rabbit reduction, they actually survived pretty well. And all the cats that didn't know about it were elsewhere, they had a massive, uh, massive crash. Which, for me, was not too good because I really wanted to make a story about how rabbit control made them crash, but it, that southern boundary heavily diluted my uh, hopeful results. But, um, yeah. So what was it about that southern boundary that made it 
so good, and that's the one adjoining the rest of the reserve. And you could say the reserve contains successful conservation, cat-proof fence, small mammal, you know, the bilbies build up, the small mammals, the hopping mice build up to great levels. And another way, you could, I guess you could argue, successful conservation is perfect cat food. And we produce a lot of cat food. And just a good example of that, uh, soon after that we went out to all the, um, uh, me and Catherine and John, we went out and we swept a whole heap of the dunes in the area, look at uh, small mammal tracks. This is Spinifex hopping mice tracks per 100 metres, and that line in the middle is the fence. So we did it all, you know, either side of the fence. And so you can see from this, inside the fence, bucket loads of small mammal tracks, you know, almost 200 in some of these uh, arrays, just full of them. And then on the fence, it sort of goes out and then it peters out. So like a halo effect coming out of the reserve. And it's no surprise that cats, being one of the very smart creatures they are, probably work this one out, that this is an excellent food farm for them. Oh, um, and so for about a 10-year period when there was plains mice and hopping mice in there, we, uh, and it all, there's a lot of cat control that goes on in the area. You look through all the stomach contents in there, Cats next to the fence. Now this is just like an average for all years. And so basically the average cat would have at least one hopping mouse or plains mouse in the stomach if it was next to the fence, but hardly any further away. In the good years, about two or three, I've pulled out about eight plains mice and hopping mice from some cats in the air, from single cats. And yeah, it's they just flock to that fence. And it's create, I mean, it, the other, unfortunate part of this is that, so this is the number of cats killed around the Arid Recovery Reserve. It's just a bit of a, you know, um, bit of a loose number, this, you know, what definite define around the Arid Recovery Reserve, and there's not exactly, there's reasonably consistent control through the years, not 100%, but reasonably consistent. 2022 was our worst, well, yeah, worst year ever in terms of just the number of cats pressurizing, pressure, putting pressure on that fence. Everything we've done, all the control, it's like it gets worse every year. More plains mice, hopping mice in the reserve, more feeding out, more cats flocking to that boundary. We've had uh, numerous incursions the last couple of years. And in one case, a storm blew down the uh, big part of the fence. Next night, a cat was in and they're just on this fence, constant pressure. Um, yeah. And so, just what I really think, I guess in some regards, success brings its own problems, problems that um, uh, just, you've just gone constantly being out there, trying, trying again. And I loved the idea of just, you know, doing something, succeeding and walking away. And, <laughs> um, but they, yeah, they, they, the cats like what we've got and that our conservation, we could argue that we are cat food farmers and the, it doesn't end. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the, the extra level defense. So I, I think a few things we've been doing recently at, um, in our recovery surrounds, things like we've got these um, uh, now have some of our traps don't have lures. They're just a hole in the fence with a trap in there. So as there's certain cats really trying to get in, they will see the hole in the fence. They think they're getting in and we'll be able to get those ones. Uh, but yeah, it's just a, yeah, an endless slog really. But um, yeah, mm, success has its own problems. But, mm, <laughs> it, mm.